welcome to my studio. If I do this, you'll see we are getting there with the studio tidy. Uh, you and made me my shelves and I'm beginning to put things onto them. Over there, it's, it's still very messy and things like the drawers there, I haven't actually sorted. But, you know, a little bit at a time and it's just chipping away with it and in January, I'll give you a proper tour. That gives me an incentive to actually get it done. Um, but yeah, looking nice, quite nice, isn't it? I painted the wall green. I was so happy with the table that I decided I would like a green wall. So that is painted in Faro and Ball Olive. So today I thought I would go over three books here, which I have particularly enjoyed this year and that are kind of textile themed. I love reading. I am a great reader. Um, I tend to bookend the day with reading first thing in the morning, reading last thing at night. And it's something that I find just regulates my day. I, I sleep much better if I'm not on my phone um, for the last hour of the day. So I really try not to do that. And again, first thing in the morning, it's just a lovely pocket of time to start the day with something to think about, I suppose. So to be honest, I read the vast majority of books on Kindle, um, partly because it is transportable but mainly because at one point I just, I became overwhelmed by the number of books in the house. And it then actually turned out to be quite difficult <laughs> to get rid of a lot of the books. And I thought for something that I'm reading in a couple of days, do I actually need to be storing the books? So most of my books now I read on Kindle, but some I get in hard copy. And I am going to take you through three of the ones that I have on hard copy um, and have particularly enjoyed. So this is Threads of Life by Claire Hunter. Now, I have this in hard copy. I also have it on my Kindle and I have it as an audiobook. Um, and the audiobook is really, really good. Uh, Claire Hunter, who actually lives very near here, um, she is a textile conservator. She is a textile curator. She um, is a community sewer. She runs a business called Needleworks. And she is such an engaging writer about textiles. So Threads of Life is divided into chapters that are things like power, and loss, um, let me look through which ones there are, um, frailty, captivity, identity, protest, community. And she looks at textiles from around the world and throughout history through these lenses. And it is such a brilliant book. The one thing that I would have liked and of course, this is all to do with publishers and um, budgets, is there are no photo the photographs. There are no photographs in this book at all. So if you're reading it, you kind of need to have a phone to look up images when they're mentioned. Um, and I don't like to read alongside my phone. Um, but that is my one, one criticism. It is an absolutely brilliant thing. So the back of it says, sewing is a way to mark our existence on cloth, patterning our place in the world, voicing our identity, sharing something of ourselves with others, and leaving the indelible evidence of our presence in stitches held fast by our touch. Absolutely beautiful. Top recommendation. So the second book I have was actually a birthday gift from a dear friend of mine. And it's called The Dress Diary of Miss Anne Sykes. Secrets from a Victorian woman's wardrobe. 
and it's by Kate Strathton. Now, this is absolutely fascinating. It is written by a woman who is a, a dress historian and who went to a lace making class, you know, little bobbins on cushions and things. And she was the youngest by far. And one of the other women gave her an album of small bits of fabric that had come to her by chance. She passed it on. And what Kate Strathston did was look through all of these thousands of um, small swatches and they were all labeled. So she very painstakingly um, copied out all of the, um, the captions to these bits to find out whose album it was and what the history was. And she has put together this amazing book that is a little bit like a mystery story. And also it takes those tiny swatches of fabric. Now this does have some pictures, though not enough. So here are the swatches of fabric. And you can see how tiny the writing is. And all of these bits of fabric have been given to her by people from their clothing. So there are waistcoats and there are wedding dresses and um, evening dresses, shawls, slippers. There's a little bit of a pirate flag. And it the book goes from these tiny swatches and just opens out. So you get the history of wedding dresses. You get, you get to know about um, piracy around Singapore. You find out about all of the ways that fabric was traded and the way that mills worked and um, the history of cotton from enslavement um, to the mills in Lancashire, which is where the money came from for um, the people in this book. And it is it's just fascinating to start with something, this orphaned book, um, and create something that is so enmeshed and just with so much humanity and liveliness. So that is The Dress Diary of Mrs. Anne Sykes. And I'd really recommend that. Again, you know, I would love it to have had more pictures because the text refers to all of these swatches. And some of them are in the bit in the middle. Some of them aren't. But, you know, photos cost money if you're a publisher. And the third book that I wanted to talk about is Quilt Alchemy, which is by Sarah Biscalia who, if you are on Instagram, you will know as Farm and Folk. Um, Sarah is a farmer, um, South Cal Colorado, and she has been growing plants and dyeing fabrics with them and then making the most beautiful quilts, sort of um, very American, United States tradition um, of quilts with, but there's something about the way that she uses um, botanically dyed fabrics, the softness and vibe. There's a life, there's a springiness to her work. So Quilt Alchemy is a book that is divided into sort of the practical bits about dyeing, um, botanical dyeing, always a problem, that thing. Um, it has sections on scouring and mordanting and then how to use plants to die with. Um, a lot of the book is, it's done so that you could go to a, a dye shop and buy your bits. So, you know, there is logwood and cochineal, that kind of thing, alongside the plants that you could actually grow. Um, and then the second half of the book is all about the actual um, 
quilt. So there is a poncho, there are quilts, there are kind of um, smaller projects, a satchel on bags, that kind of thing. So there are the patterns and then there is a whole section on sort of the skills that you need to make a quilt so that you can actually, you can find out about how to um, hand quilt, how to do the bindings, all of that kind of thing. It's beautifully, beautifully put together book. And this one does have, you're probably not to be surprised, lots and lots of images. So I'm going to just show you some of those images now. What I would love is if in the comments you could let me know what is the best book that you have read in 2023 um, and a little bit about it and why you loved it and because it's just wonderful to get actual recommendations from people um, rather than having to rely on the media. So this is my last Friday film of this year and I'm going to be off until the 6th of January. I hope you have a fantastic Christmas season um, and I will see you in the new year.